Welcome back to part 19 of my series in which I musically look at the score of Sondheim's Sweeney Todd and discuss how it is compositionally effective. In this video, we'll look at the strange song, The Letter. We will go over each square foot of this song, but I suggest you familiarize yourself with this song. Pause the video now and find the link below of the original Broadway recording of the song. Most people's impressions of this song are that it's a forgettable, non-hummable short song. Though true, this is what makes this song a unique, interesting, and thoughtfully written bit of dense composition. In this song and scene, Sweeney Todd is writing a letter, fabricating the perfect series of words to properly trick Judge Turpin. Meanwhile, an ensemble sings what he writes. Sondheim knew that he couldn't change Bond's original words of the letter, as the letter that Sweeney wrote, that Bond wrote, has the perfect words that doesn't need to be heightened with musicalized lyrics. We also get a look into Sweeney's inner monologue and subtext, which is particularly highlighted by the musical narrative. These two limitations especially prevent Sondheim from making a traditional song with melodic structure, only deliberately choosing each note carefully to paint a musical narrative, and it's the only song in the musical that is entirely like this. Yes, let's take a look at some of the things Sondheim does to musicalize this letter. By the way, this song is leitmotif gold. I will point these out with my motif alert. As a reminder, a leitmotif is a short melody that is associated with a character or an idea. Watch my previous videos for more info on that. Anyways, let's start this song now. The song starts with very dense harmony. Most of the notes are in D flat, as the key signature also supports this idea. It's very jarring. I also feel that every time we have this attacked chord in the song, it is Sweeney thinking of what words to write, like the evil version of light bulb in the head. And when Sweeney starts singing, his first two notes, G to C, seems to suggest the key of C, which continues to create a harsh dissonance. Additionally, the D flat to G creates an interval of a tritone, which as I've mentioned in the previous videos, that this has been traditionally known as the devil's interval, due to its unpleasant sound, to back then people's standards. And when addressing Judge Turpin, Most honorable Judge Turpin. New motif alert, did you recognize this motif? This first section, before he gets to the Joanna part of the letter, is chock full of this motif. This one in a different key, and this one with the notes scrambled. Anyways, when singing this first section, Sweeney reflects on honorable. Of course, he wants to be eagle-feeding and formal, but Sweeney knows the judge is the least honorable. He ponders honorable, and at the third echo of honorable, it gets corrupted a bit at the end. And then Sweeney thinks and chooses a word to grab the judge's attention. He pauses and thinks young to feed the generational competitiveness. He emphasizes the word which is reflected by everybody singing this word in unison. And he finally gets to the point or concern of the letter that the sailor is trying to kidnap your Joanna. Sondheim emphasizes Joanna additionally with sonic range. This entire beginning section has an upward rise to it. From this G, we continue rising until Sondheim awards us with the highest point of the phrase on the word ward, aka the word ward award. Hire me Sondheim please. New motif alert. On the echoes of Joanna, we get the Joanna motif. Then Sweeney begins discussion of the mental institution Joanna was locked up in, and new motif alert, we get this frantic motif, which you've heard before in Ah Miss. Look at me, look at me, miss, oh look at me, please, oh favor me, favor me with your glance. While in the previous section we have an upward motion, we now go backwards until this next section. As Sweeney slows down to think of how to finish his thoughts and sentence, the melody and motif slow down emphasized with the attack chords as Sweeney discovers the perfect words. Here, halfway through the song, the most melodic and rhythmically stable section of the song, kept intact by this accompaniment and melody, is formulated by the same motif we had at the beginning. And in Fleet Street, is what we had in the first song, the demon barber of Fleet Street. This section acts as a bridge to the climax of the song. We firstly get that with density of voices. We start with one voice and slowly begin adding voices till everyone is singing. This last measure leads us directly to the climax with speed. These have the quickest notes of the song. Volume, we have a crescendo. 
register, rapidly getting from this low note to this high note. In the first section of the song, while it takes several measures to slowly build up, we ascend in just one measure. New motif alert. Remember the Lucy Lies in Ashes melody? After a climax like that, he needs to bring the energy back down, as to not sound like a crazy frantic person. The action slows down and gets quieter. And we end with the same gesture we began with, but up a half step. But do not fret, because when he gets to the end of the letter, we descend to the same key we started in. It sounds the same, but while the beginning is in D flat, we end in C sharp. We even get the mirror of the beginning as opposed to low chord, high chord, we get high chord, low chord. I wanted to also point out as the melody waves consistently up and down, the bass does one slow descend, starting at D flat, going down to an A, a G sharp, a D, and finally down to where we started to D flat, or actually written as a C sharp. And as it descends, you also see the Lucy motif going down. And the melody exploring register. I might map it out from the beginning to the end of the song as looking something like this. If I map out the density, meaning how many people are singing at one time, it would sound like this. Both of these show that the song has a clear arc. This song was not written to be hummable or memorable, but rather written to fully utilize every musical tool in the composition toolbox to deliberately paint every moment and word. The melody is formed with pre-existing motifs. The vocal register and density of voices help shape the meaning of the words and the subtext, which creates a very deliberate texture and timbre. Anyways, thank you for watching this video. The next video will be the conclusion of my 20-part Sweeney series. I'll go over the rest of the songs in that video.